Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video was requested by a viewer and I am going to go over how I would paint uh, longer dog hair and also how I would uh, use um, different techniques to create the lighter hair that might be on a dog with layers. And there's several different techniques and uh, I've drawn out uh, an kind of an ear shape on the left and then uh, another ear in the center and then I'm going to get a little bit of color out to be able to show you some of the other techniques and I unfortunately forgot to turn on my mic as I was doing uh, the actual video so the first part of it I will be uh, doing the voiceover for and then the second part will be as I'm doing the actual painting uh, part again. So that first section was just some uh, brown paint that I placed on there and then I will use that later and now I'm going to get out some masking fluid and I'm using the PBO blue mask so that you can see what I'm doing and I am using uh, my hors d'oeuvre pick on a pencil and uh, seems to be the one I like to use the most and I do have videos going over masking fluid and the tools so I won't talk about it here and there I'm just showing you the PBO drying gum and I am putting on uh, some marks that would be for lighter hairs that would be over uh, part of the ear that will be darker around it and uh, so that is one way that you can save whites on an animal's fur or hair and uh, you could go over um, a large part of the animal or you could just use it here and there like I am on the ear right there. And I was just talking about the drawing gum and the fact that there is a newer version of the drawing gum out that has a darker label that is supposed to keep the mask from leaving blue on your paper and so I believe this version that I have will possibly leave a little bit of blue on the paper and I actually don't think I noticed it when I pulled it off but I know others that have had issues with that and so I'm just putting a few other marks on there so that um, that would give the feeling of lighter hair on the uh, outside edge of the ear and just talking about my masking tool and even though I have other masking tools, that still tends to be my favorite. And then the other area is right in here and I'm going to use some mask to just make some marks like there are um, hairs that are longer or that are lighter uh, in an area on the uh, dog or the animal and you can use these techniques for any animal that you're doing that has fur or hair and so I'm just drawing um, with the masking fluid to make a a bigger area of some marks and then once that's dry I can go back later and put some color over it and then I'm going to uh, get out I th actually do have pigment out. Oh, I was talking right there about how some of the marks with the masking fluid that I put on were a little thicker and so you do need to be careful as you're placing the mask on there. You want to paint it on as neatly as you can and um, the small tool that I use allows for small marks and then there are some other things that you can use um, if you watch some of my other videos that talks about masking fluid. Um, there are some other tools that can give you some some small marks for hairs and then for this one I am actually painting water for the background area and then I am painting over the ear into the um, 
ear a little bit by probably about an inch or so. And then I'm going to come in with just a touch of some Quin Gold so that it will have a little bit of a yellowy glow on some of those um, longer hairs that are feeling like they're uh, kind of getting hit by the sunlight from behind. And then I am using the Alveros Fresco as my background color and drying the back of my brush so that it won't be too wet. And then as I come over to those lighter hairs that would be on the edge of the ear, I am going to paint around them with the darker color. And that is called negative painting. And this is a wet and wet version of doing negative painting. And it will give a softer, uh, wispy kind of feel to those hairs and also make them feel like they're glowing a little bit. And it would also depend on the rest of the painting and how I would apply the values and the light that will make those areas feel like they're glowing. And then in order to uh, give some of those um, parts of the hair that is uh, laying that are lighter and that are sort of glowing on the edge there. I am going to go back with a little more color and I'm going to dry my brush again and then just uh, bring in a little more color around them and that way I can um, kind of control the area a little more and uh, darken it as well. So there's a fine line between um, having your brush too wet or your paint too wet when you're doing wet on wet. And so I wanted to have that wispy feel show up a little more. And so I needed to have my brush a little drier. And at some point you need to stop because your uh, paint could be getting too dry and then you could be creating hard edges. So now I have that softer edge look and then I can paint the ear but at this point I need to wait for that to dry and so I'm going to go on to the other ear and the mask that I put on should be dry at this point and so I will start painting in the center of the ear on this one and I'm using a little bit of Quin Rose with a touch of I think I put a little bit of the fresco gray in it to neutralize it or, or mute it just a little bit and uh, depending on the dog, um, the colors in there might vary. So not all dog ears are going to have that pink, as most of you know. And then I'm just using a little bit of the warmer, uh, I believe that's burnt sienna, maybe with a touch of Quin Gold in it toward the top of the ear. And I will be placing two paintings that I've done uh, with some dogs in at the back of this uh, video so that you can see the variety of the, the fur and the look of it in those um, paintings. And in one of the paintings, I actually have uh, three dogs in that one. And those are a little farther back. So the, the first one will be closer up and then the other one, the dogs are a little farther back. And as I was painting that color on the center of the ear, I also watched the edges so that there's a little bit of some variety and it's not too um, perfect. And that will give it the feeling of fur as well, or hair. And then for this one, I'm just going to, you could just uh, paint color over the whole thing, uh, but just to continue with that idea of fur, or hair, I am using just small strokes um, and changing color here and there as I'm painting around uh, the mask that I had placed on there. And I'm using a variety, some burnt sienna, I believe, some purples, um, some darker browns. So it would depend on the color of your animal for sure and if it's in shadow or not. And like I said, you could just paint color over that whole thing with one value. And then later, if you wanted to come back and put a few marks here and there, you could do that as well. And I'm looking at the edges so that uh, if it were in a particular area on the animal, some of those edges would have that ruffled, ruffled look to them. So when you're looking at longer uh, fur on a dog, think about that as well. And you may lengthen your strokes and... Um, kind of to mimic the look of the longer hair. So these are grainer brushes and a grainer has longer 
and shorter bristles. And so uh, that way it will have some variety of mark that it will make. The first one was a 3 8 inch uh, grainer that is by Princeton Art and Brush Company. And it is a flat edged one. And then this one is a uh, quarter inch uh, filbert grainer and it is by Princeton. And the filbert grainer has a little bit of a rounded edge to it. And so I'm going to get color and then you use or I use them the way I learned to use it was with the brush backward and you um, stroke upward to get a random edge and the feeling of fur or hair. So depending on where it would be on the animal, you would want to turn your brush to mimic that direction. And for me, these are brushes that I would not use until the very end of the painting and only in a few areas here and there to give it a little bit of a finer um, look of hair. And you could use it for longer strokes. You just probably would need to have a little more um, water in the pigment or more uh, wet pigment on your palette. Mine was kind of dry at that point. And they do kind of lend themselves to more of a dry brush technique. So longer hair sometimes can be done with a very small brush and just a few strokes here and there. And uh, same with animals as on a lot of other things. You don't need to show every uh, mark, every hair. Sometimes it's just about giving enough information for the viewer to know that that area has longer hair. I actually forgot to uh, turn on my mic as I was doing the first part of this video. So uh, you will have already heard the voiceover that I did for that part. And now I am back live as I'm recording this. And so I uh, am going to go back over to this left ear over here and uh, do some direct painting on it now and talk about negative painting. And negative painting is a way that you can paint around a lighter area, whether it's white or another color. And so in order to save some time, I'm not going to put on some other color on here first, but I am going to paint around uh, what would be either white or a lighter value on this right side. And so that would be kind of like the fur is or the hair is right here over this dog's ear. This is some hair that's hanging down over um, the ear on this one. And so by painting around some of that, and I do not have any of this masked, but I am just using the brush strokes to create the look of some lighter uh, hair right in there. And then I'm coming out um, and what I want to do on the left side is I will soften some of these edges with a little bit of water so that they will fade and look uh, like they're hitting some of those um, glowing areas in that background area that I painted on a few minutes ago. And I'll just go a little darker in here. And normally I would work this up with maybe, I don't know, depending on the, the layers and the values and things that I need in there, I might have three or four layers in here. And um, you can layer in between uh, or on top of other hair. So um, I will give this a few seconds and probably dry it and show one more layer. So negative painting is a great way to do um, dog's hair because you can just keep coming back over it and painting around those lighter um, hairs by adding some darker value. And I'll just kind of finish up the bottom. And I don't know what um, dog this would be, but um, just kind of making it up today. And just a little bit of some water on those edges so that it blurs into that wispy looking hair there. Okay, so I'll let that dry for a few seconds. And then on this other one, I'm just going to go in with some darker value to 
push the middle of that ear back a little bit because it is lighter and sometimes the inside of the dog's ear is darker or um, in shadow so it would depend on what your painting and what the values are and I will be placing a couple dog images at the end of this video that I've painted and um, I've used techniques like this so I've used masking fluid or a combination of masking fluid and uh, negative painting. I don't know that I used the grainer. I may have on the corgi. So if you see uh, the corgi painting, that one may have uh, the grainer brush on there. Now right here, I used a little bit of negative painting as I was coming down um, that side of the ear. And uh, just by leaving some whites here and there, then you get the feeling that there are some lighter hairs right in that area. And this would need more layers and um, more added to it, but that gives you the general idea of um, how you can work with that. Now, in a few seconds, when this once this is dry, I will go ahead and remove the mask. And so I think I'll pause again, um, dry everything, and then I can remove the mask here and here, and then do just a touch more on that ear. All right, so... I'm going to remove the mask over here. So you can see that um, this would work very well for um, if you have a dog that has white hair and or if you have um, a dog that has the lighter hair within a darker passage and you can go back. So you could leave it white if you need that or um, Maybe it's got some shadow. Actually, I'll just do it as lighter hair. So I'll just come back in with some lighter hair over this one. And so you can paint over the area that you've removed the mask from. And it is a way to save some of those um, lighter areas. And just that layering alone can be enough. But um, sometimes you might even want a little more layering in an area and it could be shadows that you're putting in or it might uh, just be darker hairs and so you can you can get a very detailed um, in an area if you want to by coming in with a small brush and adding uh, more to that um, dog's fur and so I would I would say around the face and the eyes and uh, the area that is in focus and uh, the center of the um, interest that you want for that animal that's where you might put in some more of that detail all right so normally i would as i said take more time and do more on this ear but you can see by using the masking fluid on uh, those edges i have protected the white area around um, for those lighter uh, hairs that are on that ear and I could if I wanted to go back in and add um, a little bit of a few marks here and there just to um, give it a little shadow here and there or a little feeling of uh, that there's some darker hairs within that area as well uh, and that helps kind of make it feel like the masked, masked area is uh, part of the painting and not just um, that you just left it alone. So there's that. You can also soften that uh, area with a, a little bit of water. And so I'll come off of this side and just a few marks here and there that you take a brush and just soften with a little bit of water can make the masked area feel like it is part of the, um, the image and not uh, too hard edged. And so I generally will come into a masked area and clean it up a little bit or soften edges here and there. And that also will give uh, the dog's uh, hair in that area a softer wispy feel. So that's always a good benefit of um, adjusting those edges. Okay, so on this one over here, again, this is um, not 
probably an actual look of a dog's ear, but I'll just go in and give you that same idea of using negative painting to um, get some layering going in here. And so this would be where there is a darker area, either it's in shadow or maybe it's uh, in the center of the ear. And so by coming down and just leaving some lighter areas. So I'm looking at this shape right here as I'm painting, coming down and then kind of filling in. And it would depend on what's going on on this side of the ear. I'm not actually working from an image for this. So um, I am just guessing, but just to give you an idea. So I'll just kind of let this bottom edge sort of fade out. And so it's more about this edge that I wanted you to see that if you use a darker value um, around a lighter value and uh, create, make that lighter value come forward, that is called negative painting. And so that is a way that you can either paint around a white area or you can paint around lighter parts on the animal's fur. As far as painting the longer hair on the dog, it uh, would be uh, the same kind of thing where you're painting uh, with negative painting uh, or painting around the lighter forms. And I'll just do a quick, a couple few strokes here to show you that. And it will depend on the color of the dog. If it's um, say it's a white dog and in one of the images at the end of the video I have uh, I do have a, a dog that is white but if you're looking for just how to do the longer hair I would look at the form of the dog so it might be that um, you're just bringing in longer strokes and I would uh, check and see if you can tell on the image if there is movement to that hair. So it um, might have some curve to it or some curls depending on the dog. And uh, just those long strokes uh, can give you that look. And depending on whether or not there are uh, darker and lighter areas in that area, uh, you might come back in with uh, another color and you can do it while it's wet so that you get a softer uh, look. You can leave uh, white areas uh, in between so that, uh, so I could have a, maybe a white area right in there that is uh, lighter. Um, and then you can also uh, wait for that first layer to dry and you could come back in with a, another pass of color over that. And so I think you can get the idea from, from this and it can also have a variety of color in there as well. So um, you can do this wet on wet, you can let this dry and then you could come back and add some more um, darker values if you want to or some harder edges. So it's those longer strokes, uh, leaving some white if there are spaces in there where it's lighter hairs. You could also use some masking fluid and um, paint on some white light areas with the mask, let that dry and then do this kind of thing over it remove the mask, and then if this were a masked uh, shape right there or even up in there, then I might come back once I had removed the mask and with a flat brush or a scrubber brush, um, just adjust those edges. So I might have to come in and soften an edge um, or clean it up, but generally just a little bit of um, on the ends of your shapes, if it's a long thin shape, just a little bit of softening of that shape can, and I can do it over here actually, because this is dry. Um, you can just come in and soften the end of the shape and that will blur it down into the area around it and it will 
make it feel not uh, kind of cut out if you're using mask for protecting some whites, whether it's in the longer hair, um, shorter hair. These are a little, a little easier to leave because they're smaller shapes. But if you wanted to come in, you could adjust those earlier shapes that I did with the mask as well. And I usually clean up those edges and adjust them before I would put any color over that. So where I placed that light yellow earlier, I would go in and just clean up those um, masked areas a little bit to be, and then put the color on top of it if I wanted to do that. And so I'm going to leave it there and hopefully those different techniques are helpful for you to work on a, a dog's hair or other animal's hair or fur. And if you have a tip, trick, or technique that you would like to see, please leave a comment below and I will add it to my list of videos. Thanks, and I hope you have a good day. Bye!